All right. Thank you all for tuning in to WJC LP Chicago 98.3 FM. I'm your host today. My name is Jeff Badu. Welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. Apologies for the um, for the delay. You know, we got a lot of snow in Chicago. And so just, um, just getting things in order. And it's definitely great to have everybody tonight. Um, tonight, we'll be talking about some 2022 tax season tips and changes. 2022 tax season tips and changes. You are live or you are listening live to WJC LP 98.3 FM Chicago. You can always catch us on the radio at 98.3 FM in Chicago. Or you can tune in to WGHCradio.org. Once again, that's WGHCradio.org. Tonight, we'll be talking about 2022 tax season and tips. Happy official kickoff to the 2022 tax season, right? Happy tax season kickoff. Um, We have quite a bit to cover today, you know, so definitely appreciate everyone for joining. If you don't mind, uh, we are streaming live on Facebook and Instagram. Just type in the chat where you're listening from and then maybe one thing that you're looking to get out of today. Right, so type in the chat where you're listening from, one thing that you're looking to get out of today. And then also, if you can like and share the video, that would be greatly appreciated. Always appreciate everyone for tuning in, especially those consistent listeners that's out there. We do, I do see um, a Badu Tax Services team member, Ms. Desi. Shout out to Desi, Desi Tax. Definitely appreciate that. All right, and then Vinny says, <laughs> happy to see you here today. Absolutely. Appreciate that, Vinny. So I actually wasn't here last Monday due to MLK Day. You know, decided to take that day off, you know, just to um, honor honor the king and celebrate a little bit. Of course, watch some Netflix and just um, just relax. You know, sometimes we need to just relax a bit, take things a little easy, right? And just um, and restore and recoup. I'm a firm believer that getting adequate rest is key to success. It's not always about going a thousand miles an hour. There, there's a time and place for that, for sure. And trust me, I've been going a thousand miles an hour today. Um, you know, but sometimes you just have to slow it down just a little bit. Take a small break. You know, just take a little break, recharge, and then come back to come back to action. So I did start a little late today, so we won't even waste any time. Let's get into the market report um, before we get into the topic. So this report is as of January 21st, 2022. So volatility has engulfed the markets this month and is showing no signs of letting up. Impacted by a more hawkish Federal Reserve stance, economic disruptions from Omicron, the new COVID-19 variant for those who aren't aware, um, and risks of to company profits due to rising costs. Fourth quarter 2021 corporate earnings season has begun with uneven results so far. Inflation continues to hover over investors as they anticipate a bump in interest rates. All right, so investors expect an increase in interest rates for the first time in three years. That's right. The first time in three years, we're expecting an interest rate increase with the first increase likely coming in March. Demand for 10-year treasuries has driven prices higher, sending yields lower for the first time in five weeks. With last week's losses, both the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 have declined nearly 12% in January. The NASDAQ is in correction territory, down over 10% from its November peak, hitting its lowest level since June of 2021. So for those who didn't understand what I just said, the market is in a little bit of a setback, let's call it. We're not, we're not really going to call it anything else but a setback. Same thing is happening in the crypto market, and it's um, happening in the, in the stock market. Right. So let's talk about what happened last Monday. Um, so Wall Street continued its January swoon last Tuesday. Monday, actually, the stock market was closed in observance of MLK Day, Martin Luther King Jr., um, Martin Luther King Day. Um, Basically, Tuesday, we had lower stocks, right? So lower stocks, and it was a a holiday shortened trading week. All right, the NASDAQ dropped 2.6%, 
recording its lowest close since October. Right, lowest close since October. The Russell 2000 fell 3.1%. The S&P 500, Russell 2000, right, fell 3.1%. S&P 500 went down 1.8%. S&P 500, for those who are not aware, is composed of the top 500 companies in the U.S. So that did 1.8%. The Dow declined 1.5%. And then the global Dow lost 1.1%. Investors continue to weigh the anticipated interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve, which meets this week. So interest rates might be going up. All right, let's talk about last Wednesday. The slide continued for stocks last Wednesday. Each of the benchmark indexes essentially lost value. NASDAQ went down, dropping more than 10% from a November high, falling into correction territory. Um, Russell 2000 went down 1.5%. The NASDAQ went down 1.2%. And then a down S&P 500 went down 1%. So the stock market has been lower this year. All right, stock market has been lower this year. Let's talk about last Thursday. Higher than expected jobless claims continue to help investors um, or investor confidence as equities dipped lower again last Thursday. Dip buyers sent stocks higher earlier in the day, but the rally did not last as each of the benchmark indexes essentially gave back. Um, so still, right, three consecutive days of the stock market dropping. I mean, that's that's a little shocking, to be honest. And then last Friday, stocks fell again last Friday. My goodness. With tech shares leading the sell-off following shaky corporate earnings data. The S&P 500, which slid 1.9%, closed below its 200-day moving average for the first time since 2020 since we had the beginning of the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, by the way, COVID-19 pandemic kicked off in March of 2020 and then went into 2021. Now we're about to approach March of 2022 and we're still in a pandemic, right? So let's just let that sink in for a second. All right, so let me go ahead and, and just let you guys know what we're looking at so far this year. The Dow Jones is down 5.70% so far this year. The NASDAQ, composed mainly of technology stocks, is down 11.99% so far this year. The S&P 500 is down 7.73% so far this year. The Russell 2000 is down 11.46%. The Global Dow, though, is up 0.19%. Interest rates are still at 0%, and 10-year treasuries are 1.74%. So you can't even get money in the treasury or the bond market. So what does this all mean? What does this all mean? If you own stocks right now, now is probably not the time to pull out. All right, pro Now is probably not the time to pull out. We saw the same thing happen when the COVID-19 pandemic began or, you know, begun. Um, that was back in March, actually really February of 2020. Right, we had a big pullback. So for those who don't currently own stocks or are looking to get in the stock market, this is probably the perfect time to get in because stocks are down. The NASDAQ right now is down 11.99%. What better time to start owning tech stocks? S&P 500, which is composed of the top 500 companies in the U.S., is down 7.73%. This is a great time for, for you guys to really get into the market, right? This is an excellent time to get into the market. Um, so if you don't own stocks, I encourage you to at least start doing research and look more into it, right? What goes down never stays down. What goes down must come back up. What, go, what, what comes down, right? What goes down must come back up. So you'll probably see things turn around right, by the end of the year. Remember, last year, by the end of the year, S&P 500 was up quite a bit. It was up over 25% last year, right? So even if, let's just say that you lost a little bit of money so far this year, think about what you gained last year and think about what you can gain this year. So what I just read should not discourage anybody in, in, you know, to invest in the markets if anything, start buying more stocks 
And if you don't own stocks, let this be an opportunity to get in. That's the abundance mindset right there. All right, so let's talk about what to look forward to this week. Or I'm sorry, not what to look forward to, but what to look ahead and see this week. Um, so there's plenty of economic news to watch for this week. The first estimate of fourth, fourth quarter 2021 gross domestic product GDP is out. The economy advanced at an annualized rate of 2.3% in the third quarter, well off the 6.7% growth rate in the second quarter. The December figures on personal income and spending are available this week. Personal income rose 0.4%, 0.4% in November. Consumer spending advanced 0.6%, though. That's, that's a little scary. While prices for consumer goods and services climbed 0.6%, so we can't really keep up for the month and 5.7% since November 2020. Aside from these e important economic reports, all eyes will be focused on the Federal Reserve, which meets this week, right? The Fed, who determines the interest rates for the U.S., meets this week. Right now, interest rates are 0%. They haven't gone up in three years, right? So this might be a perfect opportunity to basically, you know, start, start, start investing, Right, but if interest rates do go up, then things will get a little more expensive. It is expected that the Fed will continue to address rising inflation by further reducing stimulus and projecting interest rate increases beginning this March. All right, beginning this March. So just um, just something to think about. All right, just something to think about. So once again, do not let this be a discouragement to invest. If you own stocks right now. I know you're probably bleeding just a little bit, right? But don't let that be a discouragement to push, keep investing. And if you don't own stocks, if you're not in the game, then get in the game. If you need a good source, go to jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com, jeffbadu.com. There's a lot of resources on there, including an article titled The Sea of Green, Stock Market Investing 101, all right? The Sea of Green, Stock Market Investing 101. So I encourage you to invest your money. Right? Never stop investing. Uh, me personally, I actually have an addiction when it comes to investing. All right. So with that, thank you all for tuning in to WGAC 98.3 FM Chicago. And you're listening to my show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. And if you're just now tuning in, right, if you're just now tuning in, um, we are live on the radio, WGAC LP. Chicago, 98.3 FM. You can also catch us on the internet, wghcradio.org, wghcradio.org. We do accept donations, which are tax deductible. And we're also live on Facebook and Instagram. If you don't mind, like, please like, share this video, tag a friend or two, and also type in the chat where you're listening from, where you're listening from. All right. And then um, I do want to shout out. We got a few Badu Tax Services team members listening. We got Miss Desi. Shout out to Desi. We got Mr. Champion. Shout out to Mr. Champion. And then we got Darion. Shout out to Darion um, listening on Facebook. All right. So shout out to the team, Badu Tax Services team. Happy 2022. Happy tax season. Today is the official kickoff of the 2022 tax season. It is about to get hot, as Desi put in the chat. All right, Darion said, everything is on sale right now. Absolutely, in the markets, stock market, crypto market, everything is on sale. Now, I can't say the same for the real estate market, though, right? Um, it, it's still, you know, <laughs> it's still a little heated in the real estate market, which is why I personally love real estate. It, it's not really subject to the craziness that goes on in the stock market. And also the crypto market. Somebody asked the question, should I buy more crypto? I mean, hey, if you feel that you understand crypto enough and you feel that you can make money in crypto and you are you have the money to to risk, right? The money, the means to to risk basically, right? When you invest money, it should be something that you're at least willing to lose. So if you have that appetite, that risk appetite, then yeah, go ahead. I think it's a great time to buy cryptos. Now, should you buy cryptos? That's up to you. That's up to your research. That's up to your gut. And that's up to your comfort level as to how much you truly understand cryptos. Me personally, 
and this is only just me personally, I'm all in into real estate. That is my investment of choice. i not too heavy in the stock market I used to be, not too heavy in the crypto market I used to be. And for me, real estate is my thing because of all the benefits. I wrote a book called The Legendary Asset, right? Six reasons why you should own real estate. If you want to know why I buy real estate so much, I'm so aggressive on real estate, read the book, The Legendary Asset, Six Reasons Why You Should Own Real Estate. After reading the book, I think you'll understand why I'm so addict addicted to real estate. Not to mention it runs in my family line. It runs in the blood as well. But nonetheless... Let's talk about some 2022 tax season tips and changes. Once again, happy tax season. Happy beginning to the tax season. Here at Badu Tax Services, we're always more than happy to help you. You can schedule a free 15-minute consultation on our website, www.badutaxservices.com. Once again, that's www.badutaxservices.com. B-A-D-U tax services with an S dot com. You can schedule a free 15-minute consultation on the site. You can get your taxes done, um, and it's all virtual. We're 100% virtual um, CPA or accounting firm, all right, so you can get your taxes done right at home, basically, right at your home, all right? We've been around for almost six years now, all right? We're entering our, this is our sixth year in, in business, basically, or September will be year six, basically, so the sixth anniversary, and yeah, we're, we're more than happy to help you out. You know, thank you, William, for posting. Thank you, Desi, for posting the site, BaduTaxServices.com. And it's live. It is tax season, the moment we've, we've all been waiting for. If you didn't get your stimmies, your stimulus checks, come on and claim it, right? Um, so we, make, we try to make the process very easy. We have, a, we have a revamp team this year, and these are some of the sharpest, best, and the brightest that I've ever seen in my life. I'm super excited to work with these individuals this year. Uh, I think we have the best team. We definitely have a championship team. And shout out to the champion himself for leading the pack on the team. All right, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and there you go. Will said he has his, um, his email in the, in, in the chat, champion at badutaxservices.com. Once again, that's champion at badutaxservices.com. You can also DM him directly on Instagram and also Facebook. All right, so shout out to the champ. He's the chief operating officer of Badu Tax Services, Mr. William Champion. Thank you for joining us. All right, so with that, um, let's see. So a few things, right? There were some changes that were made last year that are effective for the 2021 tax year. So the tax season we're in right now, we're in a 2022 tax season. We're filing taxes for 2021. We've already filed some returns. We've already submitted returns. Yes, we are ready. We are we are open, right? We're 24-7, basically. Um, so a few things changed. Now, there's some business changes, and then there's some personal changes. And also, along with that, I want to give you guys some tips so that you can be prepared for some of these changes. Now, I would hope that you were aware of some of these changes last year, right, as they occurred. However, if you're late in the game, then this is a great time to be become aware, right? Awareness is everything. Self-education is everything. So a few tax changes, business tax changes. Number one, there's a credit out there called the Employee Retention Credit, the ERC or ERTC. Um, that basically was a credit for you retaining your employees. That unfortunately has been terminated. It was terminated early in September of last year. So you can't, know, you can't get the Employee Retention Tax Credit anymore, right? After at least... It was um, after Q3 of 2021. All right, so it was a credit for basically retaining your employees. As long as your, your income fell down by a certain amount, you got a payroll tax credit, an actual credit check, cash in your bank account from the IRS by completing either an amended 941 form and claiming the credit, or you can fill out a certain form, you know, Form 7200 to be specific to claim an advancement of the credit, right? You can claim an advancement of the credit, all right? So unfortunately, that's been terminated, so that's no more as of Q4 of 2021. So that was one big change that happened. Number two, meals are now 100% tax deductible. So as a business owner, we usually can only deduct 50% of our meals 
right? When we go out to eat, whether it's a client, with grandma, with mom, whoever it is, as long as we're talking business before, during, or after the meal, right? That is a tax deduction. Now, in the past, we had to take a 50% haircut. We had to reduce it by 50% when we filed our taxes. Now, all meals are 100% tax deductible as a business owner, not as a W-2 employee, but as a business owner or a W-2 employee who owns a business, maybe a side business like Uber, Lyft, um, you know, Amway, whatever business you run, basically. And then cryptocurrency asset reporting. Brokers must now send you a 1099. This is huge. Brokers must now send you a 1099 form, right? A 1099 form for your gains or lo and losses. So if you sold cryptos or you exchange cryptos, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, um, Ether, Ethereum, Ripple, right? Shiba, right? All, all these different coins. If you sold them and you made a profit or you exchanged them and you made a profit, well, now your broker has to send you a 1099. And guess what you have to do with that 1099? No, you don't, you know, you don't throw it in a garbage can and hope and pray. Um, you have to file it with your 2021 tax return, right? So this, this would be huge. This will get a lot of crypto people caught up. The reason why the government did this was because a lot of people were doing money laundering, right? Illegal activities, buying all types of illegal things, drugs and all types of stuff, right? And then also some people were tax evading. Tax evasion when you purposefully don't report something on your tax return that you know is supposed to be reported. All right. So with that being said, um, brokers must now send you a 1099 form for your gains or losses. If you don't receive that 1099, you're not safe. You're, 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 not still, you're still not safe, right? Because you may have not received it in your mail. Um, however, the, the broker might have sent it to the IRS. So what should you do? Make sure you tally up all your gains and losses, reconcile it, and then let's just make sure that you, you go ahead and report it to the IRS on your tax return on your Schedule D, D for dog. All right, number, number the next one on the list is there's no more PPP or EIDL loans, at least for new applicants. No more PPP or EIDL loans. However, um, by the way, PPP stands for Paycheck Protection Program. Those were the forgivable loans that they were given out, you know, the SBA. And then the EIDL stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loans. It's the loans where you didn't have to, you didn't have to pay any interest or I'm sorry, not interest, but you didn't have to make any payments for about 18 months. And also it's only a 3.75% interest rate loan and it has a 30 year term. Excuse me. One of the most favorable loans I've ever come across in my life. Um, so those are gone, unfortunately. And then PPP forgivable loans received are not taxable. So if you receive the PPP loan, you don't have to pay taxes on the forgivable amount. Like if you received a hundred thousand and your your lender forgave it, you don't have to pay taxes on it. And whatever you spent the money on, assuming it's business related. You also get to write it off on your taxes. So you get the best of both worlds. It's very, very, <laughs> it's, it's very, very tough to get free government cheese, basically. All right, free government cheese is very hard to, to come around. All right, the champ, champ posted in the chat. Shout out to the champ on Instagram. He said, we have the best legal strategies to help you lower your tax liability. Absolutely. Best legal and tax strategies. Absolutely. All right. By the way, if you're just now tuning in, welcome to the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. We're live today on WJC um, LP 98.3 FM in Chicago, and you can also catch us on WGHCRadio.org. Once again, that's WGHCRadio.org. All right. And yeah, we're also streaming live on Facebook and Instagram. And then Wealthy Minds Think Alike said, any chance PPP might return? Um, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't think it will return. But we'll see. I mean, <laughs> the only thing predictable nowadays is today, right? So you can't predict tomorrow. Um, all right. So 
that's on the business side. So not too many changes on the business side. We did get a new president, right? We got Democrats in the House, so they tend to not really do a whole lot on the business side. On the personal side, though, a lot of things change. Number one, the recovery rebate credit. Some of you may know it as the third stimulus check. There were $1,400 third stimulus checks per person in your family that went out on your tax return. Or should have should have came to you around March or April. You should have received the stimmies in March or April. That was the third stimulus check. Short um, stimmies, right? Stimmies for short. So this is $1,400 per person. My advice to you, go through your bank transactions right now and see if that deposit hit. Take the number of people in your household as of 2020, multiply by $1,400, assuming you claimed them on your taxes, and that should be how much you receive, assuming your income fell within the thresholds. Now, if you did not receive the third stimulus check or the full amount, then you get to reconcile it on your tax return. However, if you partially receive the stimmies, you receive a letter 6475 from the IRS in the mail, right? Letter 6475 from the IRS in the mail to help you reconcile and keep your numbers in order. When we say reconcile, we mean match up. Match up your bank transactions to what the letter says and see if it's matching up, right? Now, if you believe you should have received more, remember, it's $1,400 per person, then you file it on your tax return and say, hey, I didn't, I received X, but I was entitled to Y. And then if that's true, then you'll go ahead and get the recovery rebate credit. If you somehow say you receive Y, and or let's say you claim Y, right? Let's say you 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 you're supposed to receive six thousand dollars, or actually seven thousand. But you in your bank transactions, it only showed fifty six hundred dollars. So you're you're short fourteen hundred. Maybe there was a newborn baby in the family. Um, maybe there was a dependent that was supposed to be eligible, but for some reason they weren't. So you say that you were supposed to receive seven, and the IRS sent you fifty six hundred. We go on your tax return and we say, "Hey, this person deserves a fourteen hundred dollar recovery rebate credit." If we find out that you actually receive all that you were entitled to and no more than that, guess what? Your refund will be held up for months. I've seen clients' refunds get held up for five months, right? possibly longer. And on top of that, you won't get the credit. You won't get your $1,400. Your refund is just going to be reduced by $1,400 because the credit is an additional refund. So if you're not entitled to this credit, they just reduce your refund by the credit. It was a very, very confusing concept last year amongst a lot of taxpayers. Um, but I hope it, this point, just this, the purpose of a show like this is to raise awareness and is to help you get more educated when it comes to this stuff. I know it's complicated, but what you can do to help yourself is to educate yourself when it comes to this. All right, so the recovery rebate credit is a credit for those who did not receive their full stimulus checks, right? The full amount that they were entitled to. All right. Maybe you didn't receive anything at all, but you were supposed to. Maybe you didn't file your taxes. Well, go ahead and claim the recovery rebate credit. Three things I would recommend you do before you claim this credit. Number one, check your bank. Tra check your bank transactions. You may have received something. $1,400 per person. Number two, read letter 6475 and see what the amount is saying in there and reconcile it with your bank transactions. And then to be safe, go on the IRS recovery rebate credit right, or stimulus check website, if you search IRS stimulus check in your Google search right now, they will take you to a portal where you can triple check how much you were, you, you were supposed, how much you received according to the IRS. And to be honest, you may have to call them. If there's a discrepancy, then you may have to call them just to, just to make sure everything is good because we would hate for you to try to claim this and say, hey, the IRS said that I received 7,000, but I only got 5600 in my account, right? I would much rather you settle that with the IRS directly instead of us trying to claim it as a credit that can hold your refund up by five, six months. We would hate for that to happen to anybody. And we do not have your refunds, by the way. The IRS holds all tax refunds, not us as tax professionals. All right, so that's something to keep in mind. Big change. 
recovery rebate credit, third stimulus check, has to be reconciled on the 2021 tax return. Then the child tax credit, it did increase to um, $3,000 per child. Right? It used to be $2,000, $3,000. And then if your child is under the age of five, then they get an extra $600, so $3,600. Now, one thing that happened is half of this money was supposed to be sent to you in 2021. From July all the way through December, six months, you were supposed to receive half of what you were entitled to. You are to receive a letter 6419, and what I just found out on Friday was that if you're married and you filed jointly, they sent it to each spouse separately. Why they did that, I don't know. They split the amounts in half if you filed married filing jointly, and they send one to each spouse, maybe in case of any custody or any, like, you know, someone's trying to claim the child issues, things that could happen along the journey. So I guess the IRS is covering themselves when it comes to this. Now, keep in mind, when you're filing jointly, combine these two amounts, though. Combine these two amounts. Now, this one, unlike the stimulus checks, if it's find out, if it's discovered that you are not entitled, you must pay this money back. Once again, if you receive the advance and you are not entitled to it, you must pay it back. For the stimulus checks, you don't have to pay it back. If you received it, but it didn't belong to you, right? You know... Um, so half of the advanced child tax credit was sent in 2021. So to claim the other half, which is known as the child tax credit, you go on your tax return and you reconcile. Right? You look in your bank transactions. Number one, always look in your bank transactions, total the amount. Number two, you look at letter 6419, which should have already, you should have already received that letter, by the way. You should have already received that letter, should have came in. The first week of January, right, possibly the second week of January, letter 6419, that's the advanced child tax credit. All right. And your job is to reconcile this, first of all, with your bank transactions. Then number two, go ahead and go on the IRS child tax credit portal, Google IRS child tax credit portal. See what they're saying. Right. Dusty says she got hers. Absolutely. See what they're saying. Match it up with your 6419 letter, it's usually the same amount. And then also match it up with your bank. So it's a triple reconciliation. And then you go ahead and file your taxes. So there might be some work you have to do before you file your taxes. It might not just be as easy as, hey, tax preparer, here's the documents, go figure it out. It might not be that easy. All right? So just something to keep in mind. All right, so Robert, let's see, Robert asked a question. Robert Gray, what's that behind you? Not exactly sure. I think you're talking about the WJC banner, 98.3 FM. If there's something I'm aware of, maybe some illusion I can't see, um, just let me know. Um, so child tax credit, recovery rebate credit, these must be reconciled on your tax return. All right, must be reconciled on your tax return. Number three is the child independent care credit, which is on top of the child tax credit has increased to now $4,000 per child. It used to be $600. Now it is $4,000 per child, $8,000 maximum though for the whole family. All right, so if you pay for daycare, nanny, and all that stuff, you can get up to a $4,000 per child credit, up to a maximum for the family, $8,000. This is a credit, meaning cash back in your pocket. All right, so that's big. That was a big increase. Shout out to the Biden administration for that. All right, the champ says, make sure they, um, you check the irs.gov site before going to see your tax preparer. Absolutely. Don't come to the tax preparer without being prepared. Yes, we are here to prepare your taxes professionally, but just like I'm telling you now, we may have to send you back to the portal, um, IRS portal, to your letter, 6419, and then we might tell you, hey, can you please reconcile your bank transactions? Right? Sorry for the background noise. Looks like there's a fire truck going around. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of changes that happened in 2021, All right, A lot of changes. So ultimately letter 6419 is the letter you'll receive from the IRS for, for the child tax credit for the child independent care credit. You just go ahead and claim it on your tax return. I right? just go ahead and claim it on your tax return. All right. And I do encourage you to take advantage of these credits. By the way, if you don't file your taxes, guess what? You can't claim these credits, right? 
And also on our checklist for our firm, Badu Tax Services, we include, we guide you throughout the process. We have an entire checklist that walks you through some of these steps. Hey, did you receive the third stimulus check? Right? Hey, did you receive the child tax credit? Those sort of things are things that we prepare you for. Earned income credit, if you have no dependents, is now increased from 543 to 1502. So that's a nice bump for those with, with no kids. All right. And then the premium tax credit, the credit for you to subsidize your health insurance, right? Your premium tax credit is the credit for you to subsidize your health insurance, which can potentially drop your health insurance premiums down to zero. That credit actually went up, right? That credit did go up for 2021. All right. So we do have a comment. Let's see. Selassie, um, thank you for joining. Selassie says, just join. I beg what? Uh, what is reconciliation of bank transactions? Reconciliation just means you're reviewing, you're paying attention, you're tallying up or you're retallying. You're just paying attention basically to your numbers. You're reviewing it. That's all reconciliation means. You're matching up stuff, right? You're paying close attention. It's very important to pay attention. Right? Those who pay attention usually win in life. Right? Just some, something I've noticed. Um, so Champ says, Badu Tax Services, Let's see. Yes, we are available on social media at Badu Tax Services. We have all the links you need to claim those credits. Absolutely. All right. So what are some tips? All these changes, all these different things going on. What, what can you do? Number one, file early. After you gather all your documents, you've done your reconciliations, your due diligence, file early. Don't wait until April 15th. April is not the time to be trying to reconcile all these things and trying to discover your letter. Maybe you lost the letter. File early, right? I would say first week of February. File, right? Get, get your taxes in. Be first in line to, to get your refund. The IRS has a lot of delays this year. They've already come out in the news. Shout out to CNN for interviewing me. I actually went on CNN, which eventually went on ABC, NBC, Fox News, all the different major outlets out there. And they interviewed me and they said, well, what, what do you think is, gonna ha is going to happen this tax season? And I said, well, it, I predict it's going to be a little chaotic because the IRS has already let us know they're behind, they're short staffed, they're, they're lacking funding. Do not mail anything to the IRS right now. It will be held up for months, possibly a year. All right, so do everything electronically. I know some people are old school, stuck in their ways and all that. Try to do it electronically. Trust me, it will save you a lot of trouble. Deadlines are March 15th if you have a partnership or S-Corp business, S-Corporation. And then April 18th, instead of April 15th, it's April 18th. You get three extra days this year, right? Three extra days. Don't wait that long, though. Um, individuals and C-Corps, you're due by April 18th. My advice, as I've been stating, the common theme, reconcile your, your books, your 2021 books. Get those reconciled. Make sure you're reviewing your transactions, looking at the credits you got, matching them up with the letters. And if you're a business owner, especially, make sure you're reconciling using something like QuickBooks, right? Using something like QuickBooks to match up your, your numbers. And then deduct everything, write everything off. Right? When in doubt, write it off. When in doubt, write it off. Deduct it all. And then also communicate throughout the process with your tax preparer. It's always a two-way street. It's not just a one-way communication. Communicate. If you know something has changed, communicate, right? If you know that you don't have a certain letter, a certain document, communicate. I know everybody's in a rush to get the refunds and all that. Trust me, tone down the pressure, right? The money will be there. The money is yours. Just do the right thing to avoid all those delays. Submit everything. Don't miss a 1099. Don't, don't miss any of that. So that's why I said first week of February is probably the best time to file, right? Get your stuff ready now, but maybe file first week of February. It's the best time. All W-2s, all 1099s are due to be sent to you by then. Um, and, and yeah, use QuickBooks. Use QuickBooks in the process. QuickBooks is a, is a software, an app for small business owners that allows you to categorize and download transactions, Create professional looking invoices, upload receipts, right? Um, look at financial reports, your profit and loss, your balance sheet, and also track inventory. Um, basically, it is a full blown accounting software. 
It does have a professional look and feel, and it is ranked the best software in the industry. So it is a great tool to use, All right? No more shoe box, no more Excel spreadsheets. You probably will still export QuickBooks into Excel, but no more of that manually entering everything into a spreadsheet, right? No more of that. So it is the 2022 tax season, the, the moment we've all been waiting for. 2022, I'll tell you this, has had a very, very interesting start. At least for me personally, I've had a very, very interesting start to the year. A few trials and tribulations, right? A few great things, a few things to, you know, to take us to the next level. But it's been very interesting. The stock market is down. Crypto market is down. You know, tax season, IRS has already said it's going to be chaotic. We have an Omicron variant. So there's a lot of negative things happening in the world. But my advice to you is turn that, flip that into positive, positivity. Turn that mindset into positive thinking. We still have 11 more months to go in a year. So there's so much greatness that can happen this year in 2022. I encourage you to keep your head up. I encourage you to, you know, always be on up and up, right? We have this show every Monday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Central. It is free, 100%, no charge. So I encourage you, if you do need a tax professional, tax preparer, we're always here to help. We are taking on new clients. Our website is badutaxservices.com. Once again, that's badutaxservices.com. We assist clients in all 50 states, and we also have clients that reside in over 25 countries at the moment. So we're always here to help. We at a minimum offer you a free 15-minute consultation to hear you out, listen to you, whatever concerns that you have. And yeah, shout out to my team. Shout out to our clients. We love each and every one of you. Um, and I think we'll have a great rest of the 2022. If your year has started off rough, I promise you, if you keep your head up, it will be a great rest of the year. Um, so we'll be back next Monday. We'll be talking about how to infinitely multiply your tax refund. So we're going to continue the discussion. Right? Thank you, Desi. BaduTaxServices.com is our website. And then my personal website for infinite resources is jeffbadu.com. jeffbadu.com, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com. Tomorrow night, shameless plug, we have an event called Imagine a World Filled with Abundance. Imagine a world filled with abundance. That's from 6 to 7 p.m. Central on Zoom. Text the word abundance to 773-819-5675. Once again, 773 773- 819-5675 to RSVP for the event. We'll have a, a jam-packed Zoom room. We'll have a discussion. And we'll be addressing the question, what, is, what, what would a world filled with abundance look like for you? We really want to hear, what does abundance look like for you? Everybody has their own definition. So it is an open floor, open discussion. You can talk to me for an hour. You can talk to my team for an hour. And we'll be talking about some important things and helping you along your abundance journey. So with that, won't hold you any longer. My name is Jeff Badu. Thank you for tuning in to WJC LP 98.3 FM Chicago. And this is the show Money Talks, where all we talk is money. I look forward to continuously deliver, delivering you all some content. And I hope you all have a great, great, great rest of the evening. Thank you.